goodness and your grace. God, as we gather again one more time, we're so grateful that you've allowed us to come together. And Father, we ask that you would bless the proceedings of this house. But God, in particular, we speak blessings upon Madam President and all of the senators, God. We thank you that you would be in the midst of us today. Bless our nation, our people. God, we thank you for your goodness and your grace. We glorify and magnify your name. You're King of kings and you're Lord of all. In the name that is above every name, and let everyone say, Amen. You've taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day. Good to see all of you. It seems like it's been a long time. So we will begin with the our adoption of minutes. Uh, uh, President, I beg leave. Madam Vice President, uh, put you in the chair anyway. Um, I beg leave to move the adoption of the minutes of the 20th day of June 2018. If I may obtain a seconder. Madam Vice President, I rise the second. It has That's the correct one? No, the second. That's the wrong one. Oh, you give me the wrong copy. Too late. Oh, here? It's here? Okay, okay. <coughs> Pardon me, I withdraw that, uh, if I may have consent to withdraw that motion. I don't think it was seconded. It was seconded, yes. Yes. May I have consent to withdraw the motion? <laughs> <laughs> I t I, I, the consent of the other side is deemed. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Madam Vice President. I beg leave to move for the adoption of the minutes of the fourth day of July 2018. If I may again obtain a second, then. Madam thank Vice you. President, I rise to second. It has been moved and seconded that the minutes of July 4th be accepted as presented. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? The minutes are accepted as presented. Motion for leave of absence, leave to resign. Swearing in of new senators, communications by the president. Uh, just a few words over the past several weeks. The parliamentary fraternity has experienced quite a few losses by death, directly and indirectly. Despite the time that has passed and some of these have occurred, I think it's appropriate that this body go on record as far as officially expressing sincere condolences to the families. Firstly, the Sands family on the loss of Ambassador Mr. Basil Sands, the father of our Minister of Health, the Honorable Dwayne Sands. We also express sincere condolences to the wife, Mrs. Kutel Nimoa, and the family of the late former cabinet minister of the environment, the Honorable Fenton Nemoa. And we also extend sincere condolences to the family <coughs> of our former, of the former senator, Talita Strawn, the mother of the former minister of social services, the Honorable Melanie Griffin. May their souls rest in peace. I would also like to thank all of my colleagues in both houses for their kind condolences on the loss of my brother. And so on behalf of myself and my family, especially his children who had not long before lost their mom, that we appreciate and thank all of you. Now on a more positive note, we also send greetings to the President of the Senate, the Honorable K. Smith who is recovering from surgery, and so we wish her well and hope that she will return to us soon. Absolutely. Yes.
<laughs> Madam Vice President, um, I'm taking my lead from you. Um, I rise uh, on behalf of the government um, side in this place um, to bring deepest uh, condolences and sympathies to the bereaved families of, um, and, and I take them in the order that uh, you have brought those names forward, the late Basil Sells Sands, the late Fenton Nemore, and the late Senator Talita Strong. Um, let me say that um, His Excellency Basil Sands uh, is really an iconic figure in our society uh, for many, many years. Uh, he not only had earned an illustrious stature in our society, but he had the statue, <laughs> as <laughs> former Prime Minister would say. The, he had the height and the command that went with it. Uh, he rose to the pinnacles of uh, his profession, his life's profession being accounting, and uh, was the first in many ways I think the first black partner of a major international accounting firm, Panel Care Foster, and uh, so many other ways. I attended both ceremonies for him because, of course, well known to all of us, he also rose to the pinnacle of civic society in terms of his fraternal involvement with the Prince Hall affiliation of Freemasons and most particularly with the, the um, they call concordant body uh, being that of the ancient and accepted Scottish rite of Freemasonry uh, in which um, illustrious, truly illustrious Brother Sands rose to global international importance by becoming the sovereign commander not just of the Bahamas but of the entire northern jurisdiction of Prince Hall Freemasonry in the world. And he would have been responsible in terms of that order for members of that order dispersed throughout the world. Wherever there are United States military bases, there's a Prince Hall Lodge to be found. And all of these rights around the world. So he truly rose to global significance. Um, but more than that, he was a father to many, many in this, in this country, a father figure. He was a leader, um, as I say, in many ways. And you know, they say in, in, in this book of Matthew, by their fruits shall ye be known. And uh, there's no question that uh, Basil Sands has left mighty fruit in our society, whether in the legal profession the medical profession, um, the veterinary profession, the accounting profession, now the, 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 the po political profession. Um, and we see his son, um, his now, I think, youngest son, or, yes, his youngest son, Dwayne Ernest Lascelles Sands, um, rising to great prominence as, in my view, he is destined to be one of the finest, if not the finest, ministers of health we've ever had. And so, uh, on behalf of the government, I offer, this is my personal view. I, I work with Dwayne for, for many years. I have nothing but the highest regard for his, his professional capacity and his commitment, his deep commitment to the Bahamian people. He learned that at the feet of Gamaliel, at the feet of his father. Now, now, interestingly enough, <laughs> you know, uh, Basil Sands was solider than the rock. He was a solid BLD from, from, what do you say, from, um, from way back. <laughs> he was from, must be from the beginning, if not the actual foundational meeting shortly thereafter. And he has never, he never wearied, wa wavered. <laughs> but, um, you know, they say, can our mother's tender care cease towards the charge she bears? So I don't know, because certainly with Dr. Sands, he, he went against the grain. But you know what? I don't think that caused Basil, Basil Sands 
a moment's worry because I think in all things he gloried in the excellence that all of his children have shown every day of their lives. That's excellence. You learn that. You learn that. And they learn that from their father and their mother. Um, oh, and to stand here today and to bring further condolences to not only my colleague, but my distant cousin, Fenton Nemo. Um, part of me to stand out of the Nixon clan in Exuma, so we, uh, we all share blood. <laughs> and uh, Fenton's mother was a Nixon. And, uh, oh yeah, and my cousin Nina, as she, she was called, is called, um, is my mother's cousin and one of my, I think, grandmother's nieces or something, anyway. All mixed up, you know. <laughs> we all came out of the Nixons because a clan of the Nixons came from the mainland and settled fa Little Farmer's Key. And uh, so we are all kith and kin. Um, but, you know, Fenton and I, didn't, we didn't grow up as kith and kin because it was a bit of separation. And Fenton actually started off as an aggressive unionist, and then he was PLP. <laughs> And I think he, 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 he fought for the Salem. He couldn't have been too close a family to me, eh? But don't worry, he came home, he came home. He came home. He came home. Um, it, as I recall, he always told me the story, he fought hard for the Salem nomination. And I think it was in 1992, and they gave it to him, and then they cut it out. They cut it out um, um, because uh, I guess they had to do what they had to do. And uh, so he didn't get the opportunity to run way back then, but he was politically committed throughout his life. Um, I came to know him when I was part of a committee that was, you know, personally um, um, uh, uh, charged by the then leader, Hubert Ingram, the most honorable Hubert Ingram, um, with, with um, checking out these fellas. What had happened is they broke off from the PLP with B.J. Nottage, and B.J. had gone back. And they were there sort of in limbo. And the question was, would they stay or would they go? Well, we wanted to make sure they came to us. <laughs> so we had a meeting with Charlie and Fenton and Byron, and we had a good talk and everything, and that's how the relationship went. And so we went back, gave our highest recommendation to, to the leader, Tommy and I, and they were brought in. And I must say that they became excellent ministers. Fenton among them, excellent ministers who embodied the truest traditions of the free national movement, which are purist traditions. We don't often or always live up to our purist traditions, but I would say that Fenton, Charlie, and Byron, certainly in their tenure, um, exhibited very fine ministerial qualities that we still treasure. And uh, some po pointed to the fact that after we lost in 2012 uh, um, that, that um, you know, Fenton had run for office and was not successful, but you know, he chose an aside. And, uh, you know, that's just the way it goes. Someone has to win, someone has to lose. It does not mean that the Free National Movement didn't love and cherish Fenton. We loved and we cherished our brother. We, we, we suffered as he suffered. And no, and, uh, and, you know, so members opposite want to say, oh, he ran for chairman and didn't win. Well, so many. I ran for chairman. I ran for chairman and I didn't win <laughs> in 2012, too. But uh, I don't believe for one instant that those delegates who didn't vote for me didn't love me, even as they voted me out. <laughs> um, and, and so I want to express, as I've expressed to his dear wife, uh, Qtel, and to his family generally, that the Free National Movement stands with you, that um, you know, if there's any need or anything that we can do to ease his family, his children through this difficult time, we as a party and as a government stand ready uh, to give any support as may be required. And so again, on behalf of members of this side, I bring our most sincere condolences. Uh, lastly, to Mrs. Tilita Strong. And the mother um, of um, you know, um, Ms. Melanie Griffin, former minister. Um, 
and again, this is an instance of buy thy fruits, but when one looks at the life of Toledo Strawn, it, it, is, it is really, you could take it as, as a, one of these iconic journeys to think that, you know, over the past 60 years, our country has seen such social progress that straw vendors could be made senators and that humble Bahamians from every walk of life could be given the uplifting hand of successive governments committed to the advancement of all our peoples and that from her hard work and her dedication to her party, her daughter was given um, the, the ability to render stellar service to this country as um, two-time minister, I believe, of social services. And in each case, um, one has to say that Melanie Griffin served with distinction um, and without blemish. And uh, so let me, on behalf of the Free National Movement, government members in this place, offer our uh, deepest sympathies to the family of the late uh, Senator Toledo Strawn. She was a member of this place, and uh, when the time comes for her to be um, funeralized with the appropriate ceremony and respect due to somebody who has served their country, most particularly in this place, I trust that this Senate will, as one united body, stand for it, whether you are an official Paul Bearer or not, to show the respect that we have for one of our members now gone on to greater glory, that glory that in which we all hope and pray. And so with those remarks, um, I offer to her family our deepest condolences. Thank you, Madam Vice President. Thank you, Mr. Leader. Uh, as many, anyone else? Okay. Chair uh, recognizes Senator Mitchell. Hi. Um, thank you, uh, Madam Vice uh, President. Um, I join, of course, uh, the leader for the other side and, the, uh, and you in the expressions that you offered of condolences on the passing of the, to the families of the three people who passed away. Before doing that, though, I want to uh, say a happy birthday to uh, former Senator Naomi Seymour, who I understand uh, celebrated her 80th birthday yesterday. So that's a good milestone. Um, you know, you promised three score and ten. Now you got four score, so that's a good, good innings. So congratulations to her. And you know, her son, Javago, is the former minister. Uh, so happy birthday, uh, Naomi. Um, <clears throat> the three people I knew well uh, from a child, and all of them have made significant contributions to the development of the Bahamas. Uh, Basil Sands, uh, I know that he has succeeded uh, in so many things. I think I actually learned what an accountant was, or heard for the first time the word accountant when uh, Basil Sands was an accountant, because he was, well, he grew up, uh, Sandy and those grew up just around the corner from our house in Collins Avenue, so they were all uh, in the neighborhood um, of the valley. Uh, and um, they, the family also gathered in, uh, in Freetown because their mother, I think their mother was from uh, it Lion Road or Freetown Lane, but, but uh, the family used to gather there. So, you know, Basil was an Im Im important presence and uh, uh, he, he's really going to be missed, missed by our party for his quiet support. You could always call on him for anything. Uh, and uh, all of his children have been successes. So, as you say, by the fruits, uh, you know them. Um, Fenton Nemour joins now, and this is sadly so, uh, both Bernard Nottage and Charles Maynard. I said when Charles Maynard passed away unexpectedly that I thought that, you know, this was a man that I was going to be fighting for 30 years because, you know, he's younger than I am. I figured I was going to leave him in the arena. And I would have said the same thing about Fenton Nemour. Uh, and they were tenacious, uh, good battlers, but always believed very strongly in the Bahamas. And that's uh, number one for me, is if you stand for this country. And
Fenton is going to be missed. Uh, his voice alone uh, is going to be missed from the scene. You can't miss it. It was so, uh, so distinctive. And we knew uh, his dad, who uh, gave him the uh, training, I think, in being involved in civic life, because his father was a great contributor. Uh, I think he actually ran for office a couple of times himself. Uh, and, uh, but, but he also was, beyond his political contribution, was always a contributor to the civic life of the Bahamas. So Fenton came from a great tradition. Right, especially sports, yeah. Of course, he was a good road contractor as well. Yeah, so uh, he comes from a great tradition of, of support for the civic life of the Bahamas. And uh, <coughs> finally, uh, former Senator Strawn, uh, who's the mother of my friend and colleague, uh, Melanie Griffin. Melanie Griffin uh, tells people in the lighter moments that uh, when uh, she was a student in the, what was then called the first form, which is now grade seven, grade seven, and uh, yeah, so in the when she was in the first form, yeah, form one in high school, uh, she helped to launch my political career by voting for me uh, to be president of the student council. So you must blame Melanie for now. Of course, I was. <laughs> that, is why, that is why I'm here today. Um, uh, she's, yes, right. She says, says uh, you know, it was my, my charm and my, my charm and my good looks convinced the young women at the time that I was a suitable candidate to be elected. <laughs> Absolutely. And, uh, I, I learned that you must please voters. I went to my I went to Mortimer's Candy Kitchen and bought a pack of mints and gave everyone <laughs> before the election got, got a mint <laughs> and it did the trick. <laughs> yeah, so that was Sandy Austin. But she was a she was a leader. Senator Strawn was a leader in the straw market. Uh, she was a supporter of the progressive cause. You know, she was one of Pindling's armor bearers uh, there. So anytime you wanted a temperature, a measure of what was going on in the market, there were two people, Diana Thompson yes, or yes. Talata Strong, and you went to them and you found out what was going on. And I was uh, happy that she was chosen to serve in the Senate. Uh, she served from 1987 to 1992. Uh, sadly, she's gone on. Uh, we'll miss her, miss her contribution, her contributions to her, to our council, uh, to um, the development of policy making, and I think a good example for women everywhere, uh, women in politics and women in civic life. So, for the three persons, we say, may they rest in peace. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. We will continue our agenda. Messages from the Governor General. Messages from the House of Assembly. Messages from the House of Assembly. Thank you. Bahamas number 14. Message to the Honorable the President and Honorable Members of the Senate from the Speaker and Representatives of the Honorable House of Assembly. The House of Assembly acquaints the Honorable the Senate that they have passed the following bill and desire the consent of that Honorable Chamber, namely, a bill for an act to promote the redevelopment of communities of the Bahamas through the granting of certain exemptions and fiscal incentives for the renovation and restoration of property and the encouragement of businesses in a designated economic empowerment zone and for matters connected. House of Assembly, Nassau, 26 July, 2018, House and Nutri Speaker. Order that the documents be brought up. Order that the documents lie on the table. Laying of documents by ministers.
President, I wish to lay on the table of the Senate the Financial Intelligence Unit Annual Report for 2017. Order that the documents be brought up. Order that the documents lay on the table. Also, Madam President, um, Madam Vice President, I wish to lay on the table of the Senate the Industries Encouragement Approved Product Junior Cigarettes and Tobacco Limited Order in 2018. Order that the documents be brought up. Order that the documents be laid on the table. Additionally, the Banks and Trust Companies Regulations Act. Um, chapter 316. Order that the documents be brought up. Order that the documents be laid on the table. Additionally, the Insurance General Amendment Regulations 2018. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document be laid on the table. The Price Control General Amendment Number 3, Regulation 2018. Order that the documents be brought up. Order that the documents be laid on the table. The Price Control General Amendment Number 3, Regulation 2018. Is that the same one? Well, it sounds, sounds like the same one. Sounds like the Order that the documents be brought up. Order that the documents be laid on the table. That was a duplication. It is. The Financial Transaction Reporting Wire Transfer Regulation 2018. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document be laid on the table. Financial Transaction Reporting Regulations 2018. Order that the document be brought up and that it be laid on the table. Financial Transaction Reporting Amendment Regulations 2018. Order that the documents be brought up. Order that the document be laid on the table. The Proceeds of Crime Act 2018, number four of 2018. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document be laid on the, the table. Financial Transaction Report Act 2018, number 5 of 2018. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Attorney. Okay. Order that the documents be brought up and laid on the table. Financial Transaction <laughs> Report and <laughs> Regulations 2018. I thought it was something different. SI number 35 of 2018. I think there is a Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document be laid on the table. Public holidays, Emancipation Day 2018. Opening of shops, notice 2018. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document be laid on the table. Order that the document be The Bahamas Registered Stock Act, Chapter 362. The Bahamas Regi Registered Stock Directions 2018, Bahamas Registered mm -hmm. Stock Number 2, 21, 23, 25, 28, and 30, 20, 38. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document be laid on the table. The annual report for the National Commission for Persons with Disabilities, which is this for 2016. Order that the document be brought up and the document be laid on the table. The annual report for 2017 for the Securities Commission of the Bahamas. Order that the documents be brought up. Order that the documents be laid on the table. Financial statements for the year ended the 30th of June, 2014. I didn't sign. Didn't sign them inside. 2014. You know, they come in every three years. You and you and Mr. Chairman, you're in a very good mood today. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, soon to be Mr. Lido. Okay, the the government, the government, and please, please ignore that. <laughs> the government, the government of the Bahamas, the government of Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Maybe you should try to compel a by-election somewhere. They, 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 they can find a safe seat for you somewhere. Probably, they probably put you in Anglistan. <laughs> the, 
the government of the Congo of the Bahamas so so financial it's statement year ended 30th June 2015. Yeah, but we know you ain't gonna never run against the lender, so that's that's not the question. <laughs> Y'all are comrades in arms. Order that the document be brought up, order the document be laid on the table. The Commonwealth of the Bahamas Treasury Provisional Accounts for 30 June 2015. Order that the document be brought up, order that the document be laid on the table. <laughs> <sighs> order that the document be brought up, order that it be laid on the table. Any further documents? Any further documents? Any further documents? No, madam. Communications by ministers? Uh, may, I, may I just make a very quick uh, informal communication? Yes, the chair on recognizes of, the leader. Thank you. On a matter of public importance, um, I wouldn't say grave public importance because I don't panic easy. <laughs> um, I would just wish to inform um, you, Madam Vice President, members of this honorable chamber, and the Bahamian people at large, that um, in consequence of the grant of leave, meaning permission, um, for um, this uh, group called Respect Our Homes Limited and the persons represented, um, the grant of leave to that entity and those persons um, by uh, of leave to bring judicial review proceedings, which grant was made on Friday the 3rd of August of this year by Justice Cheryl Grant Thompson. Um, and of course, the attorney is uh, Fred Smith QC. Um, the government views this challenge um, with the utmost seriousness. Uh, and I want to assure the Bahamian people that the government intends to meet this challenge in a vigorous, timely, and appropriate manner. Towards which end? We have appointed and retained a team of expert attorneys who are particularly experienced in the um, judicial review matters and constitutional matters before our courts. And this team is led by the illustrious, if I may say so, in another context, an illegal context, Harvey Tynes, Queen's Counsel. You'll be assisted by uh, uh, an equally astute, in my view, and uh, expert attorney, Robert Adams. And they will assemble the legal team that will vigorously and in a timely manner um, appropriately defend the respondents to the judicial review application which was uh, granted to be brought, allowed to be brought, by the justice last Friday. Um, and I can assure the Bahamian people of the seriousness of intent of the government to vigorously and aggressively obtain the guidance of the courts in this matter in the shortest time permissible. And uh, on that note, Madam President, um, in the shortest time permissible according to the rules and practices of our Supreme Court. I have nothing more to say. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Leader. <laughs> should, should, should the chair recognize Senator Mitchell? Um, <clears throat> all right. I thank the, uh, the Attorney General for uh, his statement uh, because I think the public is concerned that this matter is dealt with with dispatch. Uh, he would know from my um, interventions uh, person to person of um, our concern from this side to understand 
what the nature of the judicial proceedings, uh, what, what is the nature of the judicial proceedings, and how they were going to be uh, prosecuted. Uh, he did indicate uh, the attorneys uh, had been, uh, th this work had been assigned to these two attorneys. Uh, I hope that the matter is dealt with uh, with dispatch. As, I sa as our own statement says, they, there needs to be some resolution to this matter, uh, which is a public, uh, public health, public security uh, to issue. And uh, we uh, hope that uh, as it, wor it works its way through the courts uh, quickly. Uh, and uh, I have some experience with this litigant. Uh, and so my concern, yes, right, yeah. But, and, and so the reason I raise that point is that my concern has always been uh, abuse of the courts. And I hope that that is uh, something which is brought front and center in this case, whether or, ma whether or not there is actually abuse of the court system in this matter. Yeah. Thank you, Senator. Thank you. Communica communication by senators, questions, answers to questions, presentations of petitions, appointment of select committees, report of committees, first reading of bills. Madam, the chair recognizes Senator. Thank you, Madam Vice President. Madam Vice President, uh, it gives me great uh, pleasure to move for the first reading of the following bill, a bill for an act to promote the redevelopment of communities of the Bahamas through the granting of certain exemptions and fiscal incentives for the renovation and restoration of property and the encouragement of businesses in a designated economic empowerment zone and for matters connected thereto. If I may obtain a seconder. The short title of which is the Economic Empowerment Zones Bill 2018. Thank you. I rise to second, Madam Vice President. First time, we read it first time. Just like he read it first time. He read the first time. As many? Aye. 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 granting of certain exemptions and fiscal incentives for the renovation and the restoration of property and the encouragement of businesses in a designated economic empowerment zone and for matters connected thereto. Hmm? Any further first readings? There are no further first readings, Madam, Madam uh, Vice President. Madam Vice President, uh, I now, um, on that note, rise to move that the, <coughs> that this, the business of the Senate be adjourned. Suspended, pardon me, be suspended. Perfection is not given to man. I, I now move that the business of the Senate be suspended until tomorrow, the ninth day of August 2018 at 10 a.m. in the morning and give notice as I do move the motion that we intend to go through second reading and committal, third reading and passage of the bill tomorrow. There if I may obtain a seconder. A second. It, yeah, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Chair recognizes <coughs> Senator Mitchell. Great. Uh, thank you, um, uh, Mr. Madam Vice President. 
as a result of a lot of complications and back and forth, I had uh, anticipated that we would not be here tomorrow. I was hoping that uh, we could deal with this on Monday. So I won't be here tomorrow, but uh, Senator Davel will take, the, take this chair uh, to advance the position of our side. Um, and in saying that, um, I wish also to um, invite those who are physically fit to be in Bimini tomorrow evening uh, so that I can defeat them in the... Uh, I'm... Uh, yes. <laughs> right. Uh, in, the, in the 53rd annual Glenda's Road Race, which is, I think, the oldest road race, continuous road race in the country. Uh, Glenn Roll named this race after his daughter. Um, and it's a, an annual feature for me. As I said, I had not I had anticipated that we would not be meeting tomorrow, but regrettably, I won't. But we have uh, able senators who will carry the side and win the war. Thank you, Thank Senator. You, In view of the fact that you have predicted your victory, are you sure it's the physically fit who you want to attend or the unfit? Well, you know, uh, there's, the, there's the Gambia to Fox Hill race, which just took place, which is 13.7 miles, right? I, I run uh, three miles a day anyway. So I joined them 2.1 miles away. Um, I had run four miles that day. So I know I can do the three miles. And I've run now for 20 years in this, this one in Bimini. So I, I think I can do it. Um, I'll bring the pictures to show you. Um, I've also um, got my own category. Um, the category is, yes. Silverback. Those, those, those who are over 60. And I'm the Those who have achieved their, their, their I'm, three I'm, years of death. And I'm the only death. one in the category. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to make it. We look forward the to that. Yes. Yes. Yes, right. um, okay. Madam President, may I just on this note uh, say um, it, it is a matter of regret um, that we, we had a fixed a date that now proves inconvenient for the <laughs> member of the leader, leader opposite. It really was not our intent. But August is always a very trick, t tricky month for setting these things. Having, you know, this is the holiday month, etc. But more particularly, we were hemmed in by what uh, we perceived, I perceived on, on my part, as uh, funerals actual and funerals potential. We know that as we were setting the date, the news came about Senator Strawn, and I anticipated the next week might be. That, and so we had to settle on these dates. It was not intended any way to cause discomfort to members opposite, but yeah, but you know. So I wish you well on your run, um, uh, and that um, you know where they say. Uh, I think it was a great Salim one says when you see one horse running on the track, you really think you're going fast. <laughs> put another one, put a stallion in next to him, and you'll see. So thank you very much, Madam President. Um, yes. Madam, Madam, Madam Vice President. With your leave, I, like Senator Mitchell, will not be here tomorrow. I'm travel, traveling intra-country. I'm not going to Bimini, because I do not want to beat him, but I'm going to another <laughs> island. <laughs> Thank you. He, he is the national minister of labor. I don't mess with him. He's <laughs> OK. OK. In, 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 a, in a week. So we now <laughs> move for? Suspension? Uh, oh. Yeah, uh, Madam, Madam President, uh, the, the motion has been put, uh, but we need to vote on it, I think. Oh, that's right. Yes. 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 Ah. <laughs> it yes. has been moved and seconded that the Senate be suspended until 10 a.m. tomorrow morning, the 9th of August. As many? Aye. Those opposed? The ayes have it. The Senate is. The Senate is. So you say it's suspended. Now suspended. I say, oh. Right. And now I move to second. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but did you, um, may I, I now move um, that the Senate be now suspended. The business of the Senate be now suspended. You second. I second. That's it, right? Yeah. The Senate is suspended.